And hello. We welcome you to the Saluki Standards Podcast. Connor Runyon, glad you're with us today. Good to see baseball back last night. Uh, Seeing some of the success with the pro leagues with their bubbles. The NBA is right around the corner. Both the uh, professional soccer leagues have had success with it and softball as well. Uh, But still a little less certainty with college. And that's why I thought this week could be good to hear from some of the people on the inside and, and keep you guys informed SIU football, SIU basketball, certainly with football, uh, uncertain. Will there be a season? When will it start? So got a good lineup coming up with Xavion Furkron, a team captain and an offensive lineman. SIU basketball's Dalton Banks just moved in, so we'll hear from him a little bit later on. Uh, but with that fear that we might not have sports in the fall, uh, there is a good example that Things can work out with college athletes, and, and we can be productive during this time. Jenny Jansen's been down in Florida this summer playing in the Florida Gulf Coast League, and she won a championship. She's been an all-star and has repped Saluki softball very, very well. So Jenny Jansen coming up here shortly also. Before we get rolling, McAllister's Deli in Carbondale is the proud sponsor of the Saluki Standards Podcast. They're located on East Main Street here in town and known for their genuine hospitality and their sweet tea. Okay, let's get rolling. Xavion Furkron from Crest Hill, Illinois, went to Joliet Catholic Academy. Now a fifth-year senior offensive lineman. He made the changeover after playing defense early in his career, and he turned that into an all-Missouri Valley Conference selection at offensive guard last year, blocking for D.J. Davis and Javon Williams' 1,000-yard seasons. A lot of thoughts from Xavion in this. Very insightful on the outlook of Saluki football and their season and much more. Hope you enjoy Xavion for Kron. Big Z, how you doing, man? It's good to talk to you. I'm doing good, Kron. How you doing? I'm doing all right. As, as I was telling you before, I'm, I'm just waiting around for some football. I hope we can get this thing in in the fall. Yeah, definitely. Definitely ready to play. It's been, been a long time of uh, COVID, COVID messing up our plans, about four months. So definitely ready, ready to play. There's obviously been a lot of speculation. You see fans on Twitter. You see media talking and writing about it. What's your feel as a college athlete, second to last week of July? What do you think uh, the outlook for having a college football season is? I mean, I, of course, going into my senior year and a lot of talking, to, talking with a lot of other guys. You know, we all want to play. We all want to play, but this being our, you know, my last season, I want it. I want it to be everything it can be. You know, I don't want to be shortchanged, or I don't want to play a couple games and then the season gets canceled. You know, I, I want to. I want to go out with a bang. You know, with the playoffs and everything. So, I definitely want to be able to experience the whole nine. And and if you know, COVID is preventing us from doing that. I, I don't really, you know, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want my season to be shortchanged. So I want us to be in the best situation to, to be able to play as many games as possible, you know, get the, you know, get the full experience. There's a chance that you guys get thrown into a season and you might have to tiptoe around some things and, and, and be extra cautious. I mean, as of right now, that's, that's kind of how it's looking. Um, you know, with everything, like you said, social media and everything else is they're trying to come up with plans and stuff for us to follow. But it's just being a player, you know, social media doesn't help. It's so it's so hard with other, you know, other conferences getting canceled and and, and seeing all that stuff. So it's kind of, you know, the only thing we can do is just keep working and, and be ready when the, when the time comes. So that's all me and the other guys are doing, just, you know, working, getting our bodies right and and, you know, if, if the season does come, we'll be ready. If it doesn't, you know, we'll adjust. The Big Ten news, I'm sure, hit home for you personally. You had, you had a chance to maybe go up to Wisconsin, and that's a school that's produced some offensive linemen now. And yeah, no. I'm sure. I'm sure you felt like you had a chance to make a statement in that game. What was your reaction personally to, to that game being wiped out? Yeah, that was that was a bummer for us, you know, because we had Ole Miss, we had uh, Memphis, we, we played some big teams, and Wisconsin was right up there with them. So that that definitely would have been a, a game we were going up there to win, you know, and just to see that you know get cut out the season was kind of kind of devastating. But like I said, COVID, you know, you never know with this Corona going on, so just gotta adjust and. And go from there. What was the vibe when you guys met as a team after hearing that news? Well, everything's been over Zoom. So, uh, obviously, you know, having uh, seen it on social media, then Coach Hill coming in the meeting and telling us. Like I said, social media doesn't help because, uh, 
other teams are already canceling their season and canceling games. So it's, it was kind of like one of those only a matter of time, you know, you heard about the only conference only play or a couple games. So kind of prepare for it. It was just a bummer that it happened. You mentioned keeping your body right and keeping your mind right in case there is a season without really knowing when you're going to start, maybe when you're going to finish. How does that affect things mentally on that motivation to get ready? I mean, I'm going to my senior year, so if, if, if motivation is definitely not the not the problem for us upperclassmen. You know, we, we we've been waiting for this for this time for a while, so it's definitely not a not a mindset thing. It's just you know, like you said, just having a having a faith that we're going to have a season and and not allowing the outside to to get to us. You know, as much seeing everything else going on. And like I said, just keep working, keep maintaining and, and staying active. Really, that's all it is. Nothing nothing we could have did over this quarantine period uh, could prepare us to go out and, you know, full pads and hitting. But you could have did enough to, you know, maintain your body and, and stay in shape and, and, and just stay active. And that's all we can ask from, you know, from the guys. That's where we're at right now, just trying to. Uh, me is trying to ease us back into things and prevent as, as least injuries as possible and just go from there. You think there might be a little rust when you have to get out there and block some people? Yeah, definitely definitely a little rust. I mean, you ain't, it's been about four months. We met, you know, we got spring ball cut short. and So it's definitely a little rust, but, you know, nothing a couple plays or a couple series won't, won't knock off. What's the most creative thing that you've had to do to, to try to stay ready and keep your body right? I don't know. I mean, I was just – I was down in the basement and, you know, me was sending us workouts and I was getting creative with that, you, you know, using couches or using – I wanted to, I was going to use a, a water jug one time, like the big, you know, five gallon ones, but I didn't, I didn't do that. But really just getting in in the basement and, and doing what I can there. You're telling me you were putting couches on your back and squatting couches? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't doing that. No. <laughs> How are you going to use the couch then? <laughs> as a, just as a bench or what? No, just, you know, using a different way, whether I got to, you know, put my feet up on it or doing dips or doing you know different stuff like that you got that squat record i wouldn't be surprised if you were squatting the couch yeah that definitely wouldn't be a shot <laughs> <laughs> well moving on from some of the COVID stuff um i mean it, it kind of relates kind of doesn't but it, going back to last november you guys put together that great win streak it looks like you're in a position to make the playoffs and then uh, of course the disappointment of selection day and not getting in what was what was the mood like and the attitude like in March as you guys are building towards spring ball and trying to get over that hump and get into the playoffs? As you see it on our shirts, nobody cares we work harder. You know, like nobody cares we went seven and five. Nobody nobody cares we almost made the playoffs. You know, like like nobody cares that we had a you know a good season after last season. Like it doesn't matter. We got to come back and and do it again and get into the playoffs and make another run. You know, so it like that that was our that was our mentality. You know. And and one thing I took from it, definitely just going through all that and getting left out of the playoffs, it was like don't don't leave don't leave it up to them. Don't leave it up to the committee to, you know, make it to where they don't have a choice but to put us in. Winning winning those couple more games and they don't they don't have a choice. So don't don't leave it up. Don't put it in their hands to where, you know, our disappointment falls, you know, in them. Just just being around a little bit, it felt like there was, you know, maybe a little bit of anger. There was definitely an edge to some guys that you know, you guys had something to prove coming up this fall. Do you think some of that edge will be affected because spring ball got cut short and you can't do your normal summer workouts? No, I mean, that that's that's a day we'll, we'll never forget. You know, the, the emotions that were in that room, the, the, the feelings, the amount of hard work that we put in to be in that position and, you know, to, to get left short, that's something, like I said, the guys will never forget. And that's all the motivation we need. Getting back out here and workouts, you know, the last couple of days, the energy's been right. Like we are, you know, we got a we got a goal in mind, and that's to go win a national championship. So you know, COVID can try to stop it, or or anything can try to get in the way. But like I said, the the amount of work that we put in to be in that position, you know, in November, and we're ready to you know work and and keep going. So less than a year ago, you were named the captain of this team. A lot has happened. I mean, this has had to have challenged you as a leader between having the disappointment of the playoffs now covid you're going into your senior year things are things are unsettled probably for you a little bit personally but how have you kept things settled for the other guys around you through some challenging times to say it's been challenging is kind of an understatement it's definitely 
it's definitely been tough, especially, you know, with Zoom and everything being online and not really being around the guys. It was tough for me. Like, I had to, you know, during that quarantine period, I had to take a take a minute for myself because it was like, you know how I am. I'm, I'm, I'm real energetic. You know, I like to be around the team. And, and when I'm not, I'm just like – I'm just chilling. I ain't really, you know, so I'm kind of not, not really down, but it's like, I like being around the guys. So it was tough during that period. So, you know, dealing with Zoom and not being able to embrace and, and, and show that emotion with each other, it was tough, but just leading through that, I mean, you got to lead through adversity and that's, and that's all it was. And, and just learning different ways to, you know, you know, having the group meetings, really taking advantage of those, you know, you know, actually had, asking them, you know, how their week's, how their week's doing, how the family's doing, and just stepping away from the game for a little bit. So definitely had to be kind of creative with how, how to lead and how to lead different people, you know, because the way you can lead somebody in person you can't, is, is different over Zoom. Can I ask you about your family real quick? Yeah. You lost your mom last summer. How are you guys doing? How are, how's, how's your family doing? It's been a hard year. I mean, doing as best as we can, you know, it's taking it one day at a time. Um, I don't know if you can see. I got my I got my pictures right here. This is this is her little corner right here. Yeah, just taking it one day at a time, and that's all it is, really. That's all you can do. I mean, it's on my mind every day. But like I said, being around the guys that that helps a lot. So during this period, it was tough, you know. What do you miss about your mom? Man, what don't I miss about her? Everything, everything. Just really though, like man, taking advantage of those talks. And if I can give advice to, man, uh, uh, from a son to a, a, a mom perspective, just taking advantage of those, you know, those talks. Anybody can tell, anybody on the team can tell you. I, I talk to my mom every day. Like, they'll be like, dang, your mom calling again? I'm like, yeah, like, but I didn't, you know, I didn't complain about this. You know, that's all I got, you know, and not all I got, you know, I, of course I got other family, but just really talking to her and you never realize how, how much you didn't really take pictures, you know, until – you're looking through and you're trying to find pictures and it's like, dang, I thought, you know, we should have taken pictures then, you know, and really just embracing those those phone calls and and, and taking those pictures and, and taking advantage of, of every moment because those are the things you'll think back on. You saw a couple of your former teammates, Jeremy Chin, Madre Harper, get NFL opportunities this year. You know, that's something that, that definitely interests you, playing at the next level. What do you think that future looks like for you? Man, it's it's bright. Like, like I said, man, I, I've been working. A lot of a lot of upperclassmen have been working for this, you know, this senior season coming up. It's kind of, in, in my situation, it's like, you know, it's, it's make it or break it. You know, I got to I gotta get it this year. It has to be a great year for, for me individually and us as a team for, for any of that to be, you know, in the conversation. So I'm just – like, I, I talked to I talk to Lando and JT a lot. I just – I try not to – I think what Jeremy did a good job of, he, he really took, took it one day at a time. He didn't let the – you know, let the hype get to him or he didn't really – the NFL, it came when it came, and he really embraced every workout, every meeting, really just trying to get to that point of not not looking not looking past what's coming up, you know, not looking past these 6 a.m. workouts that we have every day and, and really being detailed and what, you know, being in the moment. Being in the moment is, is real huge of what I'm trying to focus on right now. So, Have you gotten some feedback on what you need to improve on or, you know, what needs to happen for you to reach that goal? I mean, really just being the best the best player I can be, best leader I can be, and, and that all comes, you know, fundamental stuff, technique stuff, and better in my game all around. You know, like you, you can never, you know, never be good enough. It's always aspect, you know, you can get better in. So getting in the way, again, getting in the, I almost said the weight room, getting in the, in the film room and watching more film and really picking up on the mental side of the game and, you know, learning different schemes and, and stuff like that. So Pancakes every play. <laughs> yeah, that is that is the plan. Well, hey, Big Z, I appreciate you sharing with us. And, uh, man, I, I hope for you guys, you specifically, your senior class, I hope you guys get a, a full season of football and, and we can watch you guys do your thing. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Big man, big heart, Xavion Furkron. We were joking after we got off the call. Nick Kill's got to find a way to, to get his big man a carry this year. He was uh, he, he lit up when we started talking about maybe getting a touch at fullback or, or tight end or something like that. So big thanks to Xavion for his time. But Jenny Jansen is next, uh, a senior to be for Saluki Softball from Warrington, Missouri. All three years she's been an All-Missouri Valley Conference selection and this summer a Florida Gulf Coast League champion and an all-star playing for the River Mocs in the seven-team Florida Gulf Coast League. Here's Jenny Jansen. 
Jenny, how's everything going? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, everything's been going great. I'm actually pretty sad that my time in Florida is coming to an end. But um, I've had, like, the best summer. Just playing with these teammates down here has been awesome. I couldn't have asked for a better team. And um, we've just been winning all summer. So, of course, that makes it a lot more fun. The, the championship helps, I'm sure. I want to get into that. You playing for the All-Star team here in a second. But uh, with this obviously not being a normal summer and you being in, you know, a scenic place like Florida, have, have you still been able to take advantage of some of the tourism stuff, get some beach time in? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had off days. So, like, twice a week we'd have off days. So, both of those, we would go to the beach or, you know, um, find something to do. It's Florida. There's n no shortage of things to do. So, um, even with COVID. Yeah, it's just been so nice. Um, that championship game the other night was crazy. Uh, pitcher got the game. And then we kind of just had to come back and win it as a team. Every we used everybody. I had to go play first. I don't play first. So, it was just a crazy game. And I'm just glad we were able to come back on top. So Yeah, they had seen that you were playing some first throughout the summer. That's not a, a position you're used to playing. My coach asked me, like, second game can you play first? I was like, I can play anywhere. It might not be great, but I'll try. And the only thing that's weird over there is I forget to cut off when the outfield throws it. Like I'll be yelling cut. And then I'm like, Oh wait, I'm the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a first baseman or did you have to borrow one? No, I have a pancake glove. So it catches everything. So I was like, I'll be good. <laughs> is, is that somewhere you're going to lobby to play in, in the fall when you get back to SI? No. I hope not. I mean, if they need me there, I'll do it. But I just, I'd rather stay on the left side of the field or center field. Has it felt any different playing during this time? Or, or once you get on the field, do you kind of forget what's going on in the world around you? No, honestly, like, I really think you forget. I mean, I have, there's been times where I've been standing in center and I'm like, I cannot believe I'm playing softball right now. Like the whole world's up on fire, it seems like, but I'm out here doing what I like to do. So um, it's just kind of been like a release. And I'm so glad that even with all the stuff that's been going on, I was able to come down here and stay safe. So how did you guys celebrate once you took home the crown the other day? Well, um, we took a lot of pictures <laughs> because it was a hard fought game. It was literally a three hour game. That's a long game. And so, um, you know, we went out to eat our um, owner took us out. We all got some pizza and, you know, we just kind of hung out as a team for the last night because I mean, like I said earlier, I had the best girls to play with and it's been the best summer and we were all really sad to leave. I think there were some tears shed and, you know, we just wanted to be around each other. So yeah, 10, nine, a lot of offense going on. Was that pretty consistent with, with how most of the summer went? Was there a lot of offense in that league? Yeah. I mean, most, I mean, our team, we had really good defense. So typically like, I don't think we had more than like six runs scored on us all summer. So when we got to the championship game and they started hitting us, we were like, Oh, here we go. But I mean, I wasn't ever worried because we have really good defense, really good pitching and we always come through. So, I mean, we just went out there and just continued to play hard and hoped that we would end up on top. Uh, how do you feel? like you did at the plate this summer um honestly like I didn't feel like I did the best that I could have I feel like I feel like it was kind of hard transitioning from like not playing for two months and only hitting off of a tee in my backyard since I don't have anything else where I live to facing live pitching but I mean I'm just glad I got the experience I'm glad I got some at bats because I can bring back bring that back to SIU and honestly all summer it was so weird I would hit the ball right at people like people would like dive or catch it at the fence or it was just ridiculous so I couldn't even be mad because I was hitting it hard but you had one taken away from you in the the championship game right yeah they caught it at the fence it's, but I heard it, somebody told me that the wind blew back in but I, it's fine I thought it was out off the bat but that's just how the summer went. I was like, you guys, you should have known better. <laughs> like, it wasn't going to go out. How long did it take for some of the rust to wear off? Well, we luckily got to practice for like three days before we went and played. So I was able to see um, live pitching from like our coaches and some of our pitchers. So um, that kind of helped me ease into it. But um, definitely my swing felt so weird the first couple of games. I was like, what is going on? But I mean, it, it wore off pretty quick. Um, I just... And plus, it's just summer league, so you're trying to go out there and have fun. So it's not as stressful as, you know, college is. So, I mean, I think just being able to have fun and play loose made that transition better. You had a, a rival turned teammate with Mac Leonard at Illinois State on, on your summer league team. Did you pick up on any, on any tips on how to hit her once you see her again in conference play? Um, Yeah, a few. Um, she's, a, she's a good pitcher. I'll give her that. But um, I think with the scouting that Jen does and, you know, the – the information that I can bring back. Um, I think that, you know, it'll be a tough game. I mean, she's a competitor and ISU is always, always a good team. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Playing for the all-star team, how big of a jump is there between seeing college pitching and, and seeing some of that professional pitching? Well, luckily down here in the league, there were some pretty good pitchers. I mean, we had Shannon Sale from Oklahoma. She's 
she throws pretty hard and Jenna Green from Presbyterian she was I mean I know that's a small school but she's a good pitcher and there's some other big 10 pitchers in the league but there's still a jump like those girls just have so much control over their ball I mean we faced Dallas Escobedo last night I mean she's an Olympian I mean she's she's legit and so I mean it's nothing that I feel like I can't handle but it's definitely gonna like these next two games if I get to play again it's gonna be I'm gonna have to really zone in. Do you feel a big jump in velocity? From like Shannon Sale to these girls it's not terrible but from like some other girl like Missouri Valley maybe or like you know these mid-major schools that we play a lot yeah it's a big difference. I mean these girls are all power five girls and they, they're like third years old. They've had they've got a couple years on us. So. Is this kind of a measuring stick for you to see if you can play at that level you think? Um Honestly, like, I'm just trying to have fun out here. I mean, I, I kind of just think of it as an honor to even be picked. I, I mean, I, if somebody called my name and said that I could play, I would take the opportunity. But it's not really something that I've ever, like, like shot for. I kind of just came to SIU to play my four years and have a good time there. And however the cards go, that's how they go. But, yeah, I'm just – I'm really just trying to have fun and just see what I can do out here. I mean, hitting is just kind of like, you know, if I get a hit, great. If I don't, then that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to get me out. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get in – like I said last night, like it was one of the it, it was so it was so cool to go out there and play and I got a lot of balls in the outfield too which I, that I hadn't got that, that much action in a long time so I'm just out here trying to have fun and gain some experience so yeah, I was gonna say if you don't get a hit just go make a dive and catch in center field it's all right yeah I mean like that's their job they're supposed to get me out like if they don't get me out they look bad so I'm just it, I have nothing to lose out here so I know you're a really good student you're studying to be a teacher when you come back to SIU in the fall what do you expect things will look like I literally have no idea what to expect I well I'm supposed to be a student teaching in the fall so if they don't open schools like I I really don't know what I'm gonna do I guess I'll just sit around I, I mean I really don't know like I, I'm not taking any classes in the fall other than going to school right across my apartment and teaching so I don't know I think um I think SIU has worked really really hard to try and get students back and I know Carrie has done a lot with athletics to try and get that back to normal but I'm interested to see how it goes I just hope that everything goes as they planned because I think SIU like I said has done a lot of work to try and make it work I don't know it'll be interesting for sure is there a chance that you could do like distance learning with your student teaching? Um, well, Carbondale, there, it's kind of a unique district. Like you've got a lot of different like income levels and that kind of thing. So it's just really hard with like, especially younger students because they don't really, a lot of them don't have like, like laptops yet. So it's just kind of hard. So we'll just kind of have to see, uh, what they put in place. I never thought I would be like this. <laughs> no, 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 they can't teach this in college classes, I'm sure, but it's great to hear you. You had a great summer and uh, yeah. picking up some accolades along the way too. Yeah, well, thanks. I had a lot of fun, so that's all I can say really. I was just here for a good time and try and get a little bit better, so. Always appreciate talking to Jenny Jansen of Saluki Softball, and she was nice enough to join us on a big day. It's game day for her. And as we talked about there, she's going to face some pro pitching tonight. So nice of her to carve out some time to visit with us. But Dalton Banks is our final interview guest. He'll be a freshman point guard this fall from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. He was the first commit for Saluki basketball in the 2020 class. And we talked about his high school career, how he fits in with the Salukis, but also moving in and going straight into quarantine and getting tested for the coronavirus. Not your common move in for a lot of college freshmen. So Dalton Banks on the world that is spinning right now for a lot of people. Good to talk to you. How you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. These past four months, I'm sure, have been wild for you. Senior in high school, turned freshman in college. How would you describe the, the past four months for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely been something different. Like, it, as far as, like, things that, like, I've been struggling with, it's hard to get advice from people because nobody's gone through this before. So like when you talk about things that you've kind of struggled with, it's hard to like look to anybody because they don't really necessarily have any advice. But it's just something we've all had to deal with. It's not like I'm not the only one going through something right now. So I've just tried to take the positives out of it and, and make the most out of my situation. What uh, level of nervousness was there for you moving away from home during this time? Yeah, I get that question a lot. To be honest, like there hasn't really been a much of a, much of a change for me. Obviously, I'm going to miss my family and miss some of my friends back home, but I mean like during AAU we'd be gone for weeks at a weeks at a time and like I just feel like I've I've always been one of those kids that if I have a goal and I'm working towards that goal it almost distracts me from from everything from everything else. So, 
I mean, to be honest, there hasn't been, I mean, that much of a, a difference for me. You were uh, part of, uh, I guess they're, they're calling it gate two. Uh, you know, there, were, there was the initial gate of athletes coming in, then another wave. You were part of that second gate. What have these first couple weeks been like getting tested and quarantine and, and all those sort of things? Yeah, it's like I said, it's just been different. I mean, this is all this is all new territory for everybody, and that the COVID test was was a little rough. It wasn't it wasn't terrible, but uh, also a different experience. But I mean, it's just it's just stuff that we have to do. Um, we have to take everything very seriously. So yeah, it's just been it's been a different experience, but it, it could be much worse. This is uh, maybe a little gross, but I had uh, a friend describe the COVID test to me as like. Uh, they, they stick the swab up your nose and it's almost like they touch the back of your tongue. Is, is <laughs> yeah. that consistent with your experience? I think, I think probably the best like analogy I've heard is it's like if you're underwater and then you do a flip, but you don't like plug your nose and all the water rushes up your nose. That's probably the best one I've heard so far, but it's, it's not really painful. It's just like a super uncomfortable feeling. Oh man. <laughs> that's uh i hate that feeling <laughs> once you do get in the gym there there will be a little bit more certainty that you can get back into a little bit of a routine but how hard do you expect that it'll be with the uncertainty of the season might start in november but it might not yeah it'll be tough um but I, quite honestly i don't think it changes a whole lot just being around the guys and like talking to our group chat and stuff like I've been fortunate enough to learn a lot about them and like everybody that we have on our team is, is really locked in and they want to be the best that they, that they can be so I mean if that means the season's going to start late whatever it might be I just feel like we're going to we're going to get in we're going to get our work in we're going to get better so I mean I don't think it changes a lot obviously there's some uncertainty but we're just going to try and get better and continue to build and and hopefully become the best team that we can be. Yeah, usually this time of year, you'd be doing, you know, individual workouts. You'd be probably playing some pickup, that sort of thing. What does locked in look like when you can't be around other people? Yeah, so, like, for me, my routine is basically get up at, like, 9, 9.30, and then it just depends. Like, I, I, like I, I said earlier, I, I brought some dumbbells home or from home, so I've been able to, to do some different lifts and stuff like that. But, I mean, then the, the basic video games, uh, Zoom calls with the coaches and the teams, going over some film stuff. So there's still there's a, still a lot of a lot of stuff that you can do to, to continue to get better every day. You're going to be walking into the gym with those linebacker shoulders, <laughs> all those dumbbells. <laughs> I've, I've watched a couple interviews that you did up in Eau Claire, and um, I saw you talk about your decision to attend SIU and – one word you used was comfortable. You, you felt like it was a good fit. Why did you feel that way? Yeah, so I actually, I got to narrow it down to like three schools going into October um, to use my some of my official visits. And it just felt, it felt right. I mean, I took the first, SIU was the last one that I took. And for me, like the guys that we have here right now are just, are like me. I mean, they, they work hard. They're about the right things. And and when I use the word comfortable, that's kind of what I meant. I just, I fit in and, and they're guys like me. And that's the most important thing because these are the guys you're going to be around 24 seven for four years. Um, so that was, that was kind of the key for me to, to make my decision to come here. I know Wisconsin's a big state, but you got another guy in the roster from Wisconsin. <laughs> Did you have a, a relationship with Marcus Damask? So Marcus, I, we always kind of knew who we, who we were. I'm just growing up just, obviously that mutual respect of, of good players um, from the state. But I actually, and I had played against him a couple of times, but I, I didn't really have a connection or a relationship with him until I actually, I came here on my visit. But I mean, as soon as I met him, I, I just knew the type of person he was. And like I said, just like-minded and, and stuff like that. So looking at your uh, high school career, your, your Eau Claire North's all-time leading scorer. I want to ask about that game in February. Uh, you, you go off and score 46. Not a lot of people know what it feels like to to be that hot. Uh, what does it feel like to be in in that kind of mode, scoring the ball? Yeah, I mean, it, it feels good, obviously. But like, for me, I don't really look at it as, like, trying to score the most points or whatever. I just – each game entails something different. And for us, that game, I, I had to take more of a, of a scoring load on because we were struggling early on. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a great game. I mean – crazy story about that so like the two the two other kids on the other team uh from Rochester Mayo uh Gabe and Mason Madsen they're they're going to Cincinnati those were actually two of like my best friends uh growing up like during middle school and stuff like that and I'd played AU with them so 
to kind of have like our last our last duel or whatever. Uh, even though we couldn't get the win, I can still talk a little trash saying that they couldn't guard me and stuff like that. So, but no, it was it was a really cool opportunity to play against those guys and and in that environment too, uh, with a lot of people there and a lot of fans. So. It was it was a cool it was a really cool opportunity for sure. Yeah, it looked like you guys had some nice crowds up there. Yeah, yep. Your rebounding numbers, uh, obviously, being a point guard, your assist numbers were were really strong too. But your rebounding numbers were something that that really popped to me. How do you think that part of your game translates to college? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, uh, the rebounds were probably a little high just because I was one of the bigger players on my team that year as well. Um, we weren't we weren't we didn't have a lot of size, uh, but a lot of that just comes uh, with the work in the weight room. I mean, I remember uh, the summer going into my uh, senior year, I really hit the weights hard, probably harder than I had ever in my my lifetime. And you could really see just uh, the gains that I made explosiveness-wise. Uh, and, and that's one of the strong parts of my game is I just feel like I'm explosive for my size, explosive for my position. And, I, I mean, hopefully that, that can translate to the college level. I mean, we one of our Saluki terms is we, we talk about re- rebounding down and Coach Mullins wants uh, guards to be able to go in and, and get boards for us to, to start the break. So, I mean, I just got to keep doing the same things I've been doing, continue to get stronger, more athletic, uh, and hopefully hopefully, I can do the same thing in college as well. You would post some guys up too. You think that uh, will carry over at the guards yeah. on college? Yeah, so, I mean, when, we, when I talk about, like, stuff that I work on, I just – I want to be a basketball player. Like, there's not something out there that I don't want to be able to do. And that's one of the things that I really worked on uh, throughout high school is just my different footwork and stuff. But, yeah, so I, I don't know necessarily – uh, what that's going to look like in, look like in college, but if, if it's something I can do, I'm going to do it for sure. Really uh, interesting core of young point guards on this year's Saluki team between you, Lance Jones, a sophomore, Eric Butler, who will also be a freshman. Uh, are you a point guard all the way? Or are you? Do you think that you can move over and maybe play some two? Yeah, it's it's just going to be whatever whatever coach asks for me. I think I'm versatile enough to to play either spot. Um, but yeah, I, it just, it all, it's all going to depend on, on what coach Mullins asked, asked of me. And, and that's what I'm going to go and try and do uh, the best of my ability. But, but yeah, we have a lot of great guys who can, can handle the ball, shoot the ball, pass the ball. Um, so it is going to be interesting, but I know, I mean, we'll, we'll all be okay with whatever role we're given. Do you see a scenario where all three of you are on the floor at the same time? Yeah, Coach Mullins always talks about playing four guards. So, I mean, it's definitely something that's a possibility as long as we uh, we can play well together and defend. Uh, it's definitely definitely something you could see this year for sure. Eric and uh, Kyler are your roommates, right? Yeah. How's that been? Yeah, it's been cool. Talk about, like, just really good people. And, like, I didn't really know what to expect coming in. I knew I had talked to them before. I, I knew they were they, they had to be pretty good people because they were recruited here. But just, like, spending this, this week together, like, being able to eat together and, and just talk, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for better roommates. And I'm, I'm just really looking forward to continuing to bond with them and, and hopefully win some championships with them as well. No doubt. When, uh, when you committed, I thought that maybe that was going to be as far as Saluki basketball would stretch north. But <laughs> Tyler went ahead, committed, and, and got you beat there being from Canada. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was cold where I live, but hearing some of the stories that he has to go through, it's it's pretty crazy. Last one for you. Um, how much did you get a chance to watch SIU's team last year from afar? I know you had your own stuff going on, but how much did you get a chance to actually sit down and watch? Yeah, I, I probably watched every single game. I mean, I was really into it. I mean, with the exception of probably the best one, the Missouri State game, because we actually had a game that, that same night, I probably I probably sat down and watched every single game with my family. How did you see yourself fitting in to, to what you saw when you watched? Yeah, no, uh, like I said, just Coach Mullins likes to have people that can handle, shoot, and pass, and I, I think I fit into that. But yeah, whatever role he asks for me, that's what I'm going to give. I'm going to do my, do give my 100% uh, to, to try and do my best at it. So I think I, I'm going to fit in really well, but I mean, the work work doesn't stop. I need to continue to get better uh, the rest of the summer and the rest of the fall, and, and hopefully that can be pretty successful. Hey, I know this time, I'm, I'm sure it's been hard. Like you said, not a lot of not a lot of people have uh, been through this before, but it seems like you're handling it well and continued help to you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Big thanks to Xavion Furkron, Jenny Jansen, Dalton Banks for joining us. And also a, a big thanks. We'd be remiss if we didn't thank Saluki Sports Information. 
uh, Michael Black for making this podcast go every week. And this week, Tom Weber, Will Beck, and John Locke for their contributions with their sports and, and getting everybody involved as well. So uh, big thanks to them. Big thanks to you for listening. Hope you can join us next week. We'll have Justin Fetcho, the Saluki men's golf coach, uh, still the champs. They're still champions from 2019 when they won the Valley. So we'll catch up with him and we'll hope to talk to you then. I'm Connor Onion. Thanks for listening. This has been the Saluki Standards Podcast.